Hi everyone, good morning guys. I hope I'm audible and visible to all of you. Can I get a quick confirmation please? And if yes, then you know we can start right away without any delay. And we have the last class of the month. That is we have a mixed bag of MCQs that we are going to practice. Also today I'll be giving you a scheduler for the upcoming month. That is the month of April. Uh, obviously just given you a few classes that I'll be conducting as of now but the entire month schedule is yet to be prepared but uh, for the uh, kickstart morning sessions the kickstart morning sessions everyone knows for those who are new 7 30 a.m classes which will be on the unacademy app so only for you know these two days it was on the youtube channel it will be otherwise on we'll be back to the app from tomorrow and uh, tomorrow we have something which is very troublesome but very very important how to analyze a CBC report how to read all the different red blood cell white blood cell and platelet parameters that are mentioned in a CBC report so we'll try to take it up in one session if not then we'll take it up in two but yes the interpretation part which helps you solve your MCQs also so that CBC report interpretation is what we'll be doing tomorrow today we come back to the mixed bag of questions and uh, these two uh, YouTube sessions that I have conducted uh, because you cannot download the PDF from there. So today I'll be compiling the two YouTube sessions and both of these will be uploaded on the Telegram group. I hope that's um, okay with everyone. And uh, Dr. Paranji, uh, if there is a problem with the audio, I would uh, you just give me a moment, please. Uh, I hope it's a little better now. I've tried to change the audio source and let me know if it works well for all of you and uh, then we'll start. Yes, a quick confirmation guys. Can we begin? And uh, someone mentioned about open house. It's only not working on the iOS platform. Otherwise open house is working on all other uh, devices. So please, um, you know, just update your device and you should be okay with it after that. So update is needed only on Android. Uh, iOS Mate is not working, so, you know, you would not be able to access it from there. Yes, guys. So is it uh, any better? I think now it seems to be a little better as what I can see from, um, you know, of what I can see from the control board it seems to be a little better and if it's manageable then we can start yes this is the maximum this is the maximum i can also shout and this is the maximum that the uh you know the hundred percent volume that the obs is also showing me and as of now it's showing me that it's you know it says other volume nahi ho sakta. so if it's a little better also then i guess we can uh, proceed if yes manageable right take it so let's begin we have a mixed bag of questions that we have to do and i'll first start with question number one over here uh, give me the correct or the incorrect answer tell me which of the following statement is incorrect which of the following statement is incorrect so about whatever phenomenon has been shown over here you have to find the wrong statement Okay, so I've got one or two answers as of now, but I want everyone to attempt and most of you are attempting option B is what I see. So all of you feel that that is a wrong statement. Correct. So what is the phenomenon that has been shown over here? Let me zoom into this picture. The phenomenon shown over here. So firstly, what kind of a slide is it? It is a blood smear. This happens to be a peripheral blood smear. If I look at a blood smear, I'll first look at the cells. Ye wala konsa cell hai? This is a red blood cell. This happens to be a white blood cell. Which white blood cell? It is a neutrophil. And then this happens to be these tiny, tiny ones. These happen to be platelets. So I have all the three 
red blood cells that you know red blood cell white blood cell platelet available now i have to look at what is happening in this particular neutrophil so i have one lobe then i have another lobe i have another lobe so i can see total three lobes that are present and from the lobes i feel that there is one protrusion that is coming out like a drumstick appearance remember whenever there's a drumstick appearance that you see in a neutrophil that drumstick is known as the davidson body so remember d for drumstick and d for davidson so what does it indicate has everyone heard of something called a bar body or something called loyens hypothesis so this is basically indicative of nothing but loyens hypothesis now what does this hypothesis say is what we need to understand over here so guys let us just understand that okay this is a hypothesis that has been given but it is no longer a hypothesis it is very well a true thing that happens in with gender this is something that happens in all the females so when i make the genotype of a female every female is 46 xx chromosomes so because there are two x chromosomes that are there that is why it was decided that one x chromosome will be kept active throughout life and one x chromosome will be kept inactive throughout life so basically there is inactivity of one of the x chromosomes and that is the hypothesis but which x chromosome will get inactive point number 1 the x chromosome that we've got from the mother or the x chromosome that we've got from the father yes which chromosome is inactivated what is the inactivation maternal or paternal remember we cannot predict the inactivation is random so i don't know in every female it will be different whether the father's x chromosome or the mother's x chromosome will be inactivated no one can predict it it is inactivation number 2 who is doing this who is doing this inactivation so remember there is a gene which is known as the zist gene so zist gene kya karta hai how does it cause this inactivation it causes a process called dna methylation please remember whenever this word is used in genetics whenever the word methylation is used in genetics this means the dna is going to become mute that is how we learn it methylation mute so whenever i've added methyl group the dna the chromosome over here will become mute will become inactive okay after that now we come to the last one when does this happen so it has to happen in every female that i've understood when does it happen this happens on day 5.5 of the embryo remember day 5.5 of the embryo so two or three years back so few editions ago earlier it used to be day 16 they used to say that it happens on day 16 of the embryo now that has changed now it is considered as per the new edition of robins it is day 5.5 of the embryo and that is as early as the fifth day that this is happening so what are the points that you get in loyens hypothesis the one x chromosome that is becoming inactive that inactivation is random which is the gene zist gene what is the process methylation and at what day does it happen 5.5 now comes the next question if i say that one x is inactive and one x is active in that case you will say ma'am ultimately the female is only surviving on one x chromosome then it doesn't this sound something like turner's guys what do you understand by turner's syndrome turner's syndrome is 45x not so you will say what's the problem why is this female having turners she has only one x chromosome ultimately every normal female is also surviving on one x chromosome only then when she has only one x chromosome then why are you labeling her as turners because now comes the hypothesis part of it theoretically when i study i have very conveniently told you ek inactive ho gaya ek active ho gaya very easily i have told you but does that happen in genetics ever no the chromosome that i'm saying is inactive it is not complete inactivation 100% of it never gets inactivated robins mentions that even if you call it the inactive x but all genes of it would not be switched off so you don't have to learn the percentage but they are saying like for example this is one x chromosome this is another x chromosome ye wala x chromosome humne active rakha so this is 100% active this x chromosome you said that ma'am this has been inactivated but that doesn't mean that all of it has gone some genes that are on chromosome the small arm like 21% genes on small arm 3% genes on the long arm 
they are still active. So little little genes, you can say roughly 25% of the genes still remain active. So even in a normal female when you say this X chromosome is inactive, roughly 25% of the genes are still active. They have escaped the inactivation and are still showing activity. That is why you understand that this hypothesis is more or less like a theoretical phenomena more. Okay. And now tell me that once you're saying that this X chromosome has become inactive, how will it look like? What are the names given to it? Inactive X chromosome, either you call it as a Ball body or you call it as a Davidson body. Both of them mean the same. Dono ka same matlab hai. So if someone asks you what is Ball body, what is Davidson body? Both of them are the inactive X chromosomes, but they look different. How does a Davidson body look like? D for D, you've already done that. Davidson body looks like a drumstick and how does a bar body look like? So for analyzing bar body, if you want to see how a bar body looks like, you are going to take the sample from the buccal mucosa. You will scrape the cells from the inside of the mouth from the buccal mucosa. So this you did from one of the females, this you did from one of the males. And as you see over here, in the female nucleus, do you see an extra blue color dot? which you don't see in the male nucleus because male has zero bar body. Male does not have bar body, whereas female has one bar body. So I can see a one blue color dot over here. So when will you see bar body? When you've taken a buccal mucosa sample. When will you see a Davidson drumstick body? You'll see that in a neutrophil when you've taken a regular blood sample. I hope now when I get back to the question, it makes sense. So the phenomenon that was shown over here, that I've understood is Lorentz hypothesis. Does Lorentz hypothesis tell me that there is inactivation of X chromosome? Correct. Does the inactivation occur in the embryo? Yes, that is also correct. It occurs at day 5.5 of the embryo. Does this happen because of the cis gene? That is also right. So what was the wrong statement? The wrong statement was B. It said 100% of the genes on X chromosomes are inactivated. No, we've just studied roughly 24-25% of the genes will escape that inactivation. I hope this question is clear all in all and all the concepts are also done. Now we can move on to question number two. It's an image based spotter question. You have to tell me the spotter that has been shown over here. Which of the following best defines it? Is it a Franzen handle used for fine needle non-aspiration cytology? Franzen handle used for fine needle aspiration cytology? Holder used for liver biopsy? Or a bone marrow biopsy needle set? Okay, so I do have a few answers coming up. Uh, B and C are the two answers. B, C, D actually. A thoda variety are hai. But I'll go with the majority of you. Some of you said A also. Take a good mixed bag of answers we've got. But majority of you said A and I have to agree with the majority of you. So firstly, uh, holder for liver biopsy. Liver bi jo holder hai, what is the shape of this holder? Do we all agree this holder looks something like a gun? Whenever you see a gun shaped holder, so that's how you, you know, technically if you look at it, you'll say ma'am this looks like a gun. Whenever you have a gun shaped holder, what is the name you give to it? You call it, this is known as the Franzen's handle. This is known as Franzen handle. So, Franzen handle. So, first and foremost, easy way of learning. We never call it with this complicated name in pathology. Whenever we want to use it, we just say that we'll use the gun for this procedure. But yeah, technically, this is called Franzen handle. And F for Franzen, F for FNSC. Guys, it is used for fine needle aspiration cytology. Why not the first option? Why not fine needle non-aspiration cytology? Because look at the handle. So for example, the fingers, the four fingers are going to be put over here. The four fingers are going to be held like this, like you hold a gun. So these are the fingers. Why are you holding it? What are you trying to hold over here in your hand? You'll say, ma'am, I'm trying to hold a syringe. I can see that in this holder, you have held a syringe. And if you've held a syringe, then you will add a very thin needle in front of it. So there will somewhere be a thin needle that also you are going to have. So now tell me, like just think like you're taking a blood sample. Blood sample may be needle, hota hai, then you attach a syringe with it. And then do you pull the syringe back? Why are you pulling the syringe back? Because you want to create 
pressure over here you want to create suction the blood will come into it after that so you are aspirating right if you're pulling the syringe back you are using aspiration so you you cannot call it fine needle non aspiration cytology no you are using a syringe you are creating suction you are creating pressure so you are doing it with aspiration that is why we call it fine needle aspiration cytology right so remember what is the all in all point that i got the name of this handle is known as the franzen handle what is it used for it is used for fnac for example if i would have not used so firstly franzen handle use kar rahe ho this means you are using a syringe this means you are using a needle what if you say that ma'am i don't want to use this handle i don't think i need the handle i don't even need the syringe i can directly just work with the needle if this is the swelling i can directly just take the needle and put the needle into it i don't need a syringe i don't need to create pressure i don't need the handle so are you applying any aspiration over here only the needle only the needle you are using i'll say yes you are using a fine needle needle use kara but are you putting any suction any pressure no so non aspiration cytology that is what was written over here f n n a c means you have not aspirated means you have not used a syringe when you have used a syringe you call it aspiration that is what you call it as f n a c i hope that is okay with everyone difference between f n a c and f n n a c and obviously if you are using a handle you are using that for the syringe so you will be using that for the second option everyone who marked liver and bone marrow biopsy needle said remember we don't use any such gun like handles for either of the two so this was a wrong statement now because we are talking about fnac your question 3 would also be there on fnac dr anshumali abhi liver biopsy image i don't have with me uh, maybe in tomorrow session i can show you it's a v shaped needle i think all of you have seen it the wim silverman needle right now i don't have it but i don't have the image downloaded with me but uh, tomorrow's class i'll get you a spotter of the same okay uh yes what is this question and dr reddy i'll come to your doubt also okay so this one everyone is happy with this question hai na before that so answers right this one most of you know before i get to this question um, dr reddy asked me that ma'am in routine what do you do do you do fnac or do you do fnnac see that depends on my clinical assessment for example i'll give you some you know basic basic examples out here so you yourself will analyze that you know patient to patient i can make my decision for example this is uh, right forearm and right forearm may patient has come with a lipoma theek hai now right forearm patient has come with lipoma lipoma means fatty tissue patient has come with a fatty fatty tumor over here that is a lipoma now lipoma means fat fat is very difficult if i only put a tiny needle into it i will never be able to get fat out so if i want to pull the fat out i will have to attach it with a syringe i will have to call it with aspiration i will have to do fnac right on the other hand so this is one assessment on the other hand you say that ma'am again now look at this this is uh, you know a forearm swelling and uh, radiology karaya tha us pe there is a 4 cm mass again this is also right forearm and radiologist has said that this is a cystic swelling cystic swelling means that kuch watery material hoga i don't know the diagnosis as of now but there will be some maybe it is blood maybe it is watery material maybe it is some parasitic infection so there's a lot of fluid so the radiologist has said on ultrasound that this is a cystic swelling that is present and ab fnac karna hai now again you think logically if i just put a needle and this had 10 ml of fluid all that fluid will spill out so would you want to attach it with a syringe and collect all that fluid in your syringe the 10 ml of fluid that will come out so again this is something you'll do with aspiration i hope this assessment is also fine ek aur example lete hain for example you're doing the fnac of the thyroid anterior neck swelling patient comes to you with thyroid look at the location thyroid matlab you're putting a needle in the thyroid radiologist has told you and patient says that i have a 4 cm lump that is there a swelling that is there in the thyroid you say fine i'm going to put a needle now you know thyroid is at a very critical area right you have uh, the trachea over here if your needle goes anywhere here and there wo trachea ko hit kar sakta hai so what do you do now if for example you're putting the needle 
and for example you also put a syringe maybe you are a first year resident your hand is not very trained at fmsc sath mein syringe bhi laga diya now by mistake you have entered or hit the trachea and in the trachea you started applying negative pressure you started pulling the syringe it will cause a lot of respiratory discomfort so basically for thyroid we always prefer that sirf needle ke sath kaam chala lo because thyroid is a very critically located area right so this is how we analyze from patient to patient so i can't say whether only fnac is done or whether fnnac is done it is always as per the requirement that we analyze and we do it is that okay yes now coming back to the question question 3 which everyone got right simple wala question tha anyway we had a young female and the breast lump was very very mobile and the fnc was quite characteristic of a fibroadenoma for that matter in the breast fnc findings they don't give you too many findings fibroadenoma is one of them that you get which everyone analyzed because the cluster is very very characteristic and what is the shape of this cluster known as that is known as the staghorn cluster that is known as the staghorn cluster of cells but anything else apart from staghorn cluster of cells that you see so you will say that yes ma'am in the background i see some dot 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 kind of things and these dot 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 kind of things are bare nuclei so that's another finding which came in the 2017 exam question also it is 2017 pyq regarding bare nuclei and that's the second finding of fibroadenoma so two things fibroadenoma shows me staghorn clusters and second it shows us bare nuclei which i think everyone knows which is very very good right okay having said that aage badhe should we switch to question number 4 okay one more thing dr anshumali says does cancer spread while using f no that's a very um, you know that's a very uh, big big misconception that uh, cancer spreads yes why i would not say misconception but um, kuch rare cases reported hain there are some rare cases that have been reported but there is no definitive finding so fnc and trucat otherwise if we don't do a trucat biopsy how are we going to get the final diagnosis of a cancer so for some areas like for example for testicular region over there it is well documented that yes if you do an fnc or if you do a trucat biopsy then cancer can spread so in testicular tumors we don't do fnc over there it is documented properly with evidence in other organs it is not documented so for other organs we do fnc and we do trucat biopsy now let's come on to the next question question 4 i suppose pure pathology question yes guys histopathological difference between a barrett's epithelium and a gastric mucosa is between a barrett's epithelium and a gastric mucosa is a b c d quick most of you i'm sure know the answer and um, there's always a confusion between two options which i get in the exam from students and over here also a and b जो यूजल कन्फ्यूजन है वो यहाँ पर भी है ए एंड बी इज वॉट स्टूडेंट मार्क ओके सो फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट आई ऑल्सो गो बाय दैट दे हैव सेट बैरिट्स म्यूकोजा सो बैरिट्स म्यूकोजा इज दोज हू सिलेक्टेड बी बेसिकली यू सिलेक्टेड प्रूशियन ब्लू पॉजिटिव दैट इज वॉट यू सिलेक्टेड राइट प्रूशियन ब्लू इज अ स्टेन फॉर वॉट प्रूशियन ब्लू इज अ स्टेन फॉर आयरन डज बैरिट्स ईसो फेकस हैव एनी थिंग टू डू विद आयरन नॉट एट ऑल सो बैरिट्स ईसो फेकस एंड आयरन शुड नॉट बी गोइंग टूगेदर you should have analyzed what mucosa is it what is it acidic or neutral or alkaline and that is what we'll study so when i talk about barrett's esophagus what is the normal epithelium of esophagus normal epithelium of the esophagus is going to be squamous epithelium that's the normal epithelium and when i say barrett's esophagus ho raha hai to this means it is changing into which type of epithelium it is changing into intestinal columnar epithelium it is changing into intestinal columnar epithelium let me show you a picture so basically squamous epithelium changes into intestinal have a look at this this end of the picture shows me squamous epithelium this end of the picture is going to show me squamous epithelium okay and then the other side of the picture i see that i have started seeing glands i started seeing these glands and you say ma'am glands are there so many places in the body why are these not the glands of the lungs why are these not the glands of the salivary gland why are you calling it intestinal glands because i can see some khali khali cells i can see some empty cells and those cells are the 
goblet cells i know for a fact that when i see goblets when i start seeing goblet cells i am talking about the intestine there is no doubt about it how do i further prove it now from my theory i already know that goblet cells contain mucin goblet cells contain mucin and which mucin are we talking about we are talking about acidic mucin how do i prove acidic mucin so remember a for acidic mucin and a for alcyon blue what is the special state for acidic mucin it is going to be alcyon blue so now when i try to highlight those goblet cells with alcyon blue they've got a beautiful blue color to them as the name suggests so remember barrett's esophagus has acidic mucin and that comes positive for alcyon blue as all of you are telling me right so now when i get back option number 1 the barrett's mucosa is acidic mucin yes it is acidic and does it stain alcyon blue positive that is correct look at the other options barrett's alcyon blue negative no that's wrong neutral nahi hota alkaline nahi hota it is very much acidic and it is alcyon blue positive i hope that is okay and for those who thought of b b was prussian blue and alkaline not at all fitting anyway prussian blue is for iron to wo nahi sochna option a is the correct statement i hope everyone's okay with this okay let's move on to the next one hiv positive patient this will also correlate with the microbiology that we've been reading in the past one week so hiv positive patient with intractable diarrhea undergoes a gi biopsy on high power cluster of small dot like cells are seen dr akash nahi basic nahi hota acidic and neutral hota hai okay everyone everyone has thought of a guys abhi i think uh, you are not up and awake is that so or you are so biased that padha hi nahi ab padta chal okay this is one what have you marked you have marked cryptosporidia to wo to ho gaya galat ab aage dekhte hain coming to the next one what is the answer to this now what is the answer to this same hiv positive patient same intractable diarrhea same dot like structures they are now seen along the brush border do you see where did you do the प्रॉब्लम कहाँ पे हुआ इसका भी आंसर क्रिप्टोस्पोरिडिया अच्छा नहीं इसका आंसर अब जी हो गया फुल ऊपर नीचे हो गया व्हाट हैपेंड माइक्रो तो इतना पढ़ा था सो ओवर हियर यू फील क्रिप्टोस्पोरिडिया ओके तो यहाँ भी क्रिप्टोस्पोरिडिया वहाँ भी क्रिप्टोस्पोरिडिया डिफरेंस क्या है नाउ लेट्स सी द सिमिलैरिटीज दोनों क्वेश्चन का हम सिमिलैरिटीज देखते हैं क्वेश्चन नंबर वन एच पॉजिटिव पेशेंट क्वेश्चन नंबर टू एच पॉजिटिव पेशेंट क्वेश्चन नंबर वन डायरिया इज द कंप्लेट क्वेश्चन नंबर टू diarrhea is the complaint all the organisms mentioned are diarrhea wale organism question number 1 dot like structures question number 2 dot like structures where is the difference question number 1 the dot like structures were seen inside the cells they were seen inside the cells whereas question number 2 they were seen along the brush border of the intestine so let us now make these two diagrams so for example if i show you this if i show this as a gland dekho pehle identify this is a gland in the gland do you identify gland of where what are these cells these khali khali cells now all of you know your knowledge is very good these glands and these become goblet cells so you say ma'am we are definitely dealing with the intestine over here goblet cells present there very good now do you see these dot like structures they have not gone in the cells they are along the brush border they are going to be along the brush border that is cryptosporidium guys that was that aims exam question and that is why all of you went on marking that the organism that you see only attached along the brush border and now when we see over here along the brush border only along they are never entering they are never going into the cell no not happening so when i had asked you along the brush border then the answer should have been cryptosporidium but this was question 2 what about the first question in the first question i asked you that the cells they are seen within the cells this means i was telling you that the structures were present within the cell which is the bacteria or the parasite which tends to go within the cell out of all of these the one that goes within the cell is microsporidia because you also have to consider patient is hiv positive you also have to consider that this is some diarrhea causing organism to baki sab dekhte hain 
crypto let us see the location of everything cryptosporidia what is the location of cryptosporidia you will say ma'am this will be along the brush border this will be along the brush border then when i talk about साइटोमेगालोवायरस यू से मैम साइटोमेगालोवायरस वायरसेस तो कभी दिखते नहीं है ऑन अ लाइट माइक्रोस्कोप यू नेवर सी वायरस एज सच राइट बट वायरस का कुछ प्रॉब्लम दिखता है यू सी सम चेंजेस डू वी सी द फेमस आउल आई अपेयरेंस सो यू शुड हैव सीन द आउल आई अपेयरेंस व्हिच इज नॉट सीन ओवर हियर ओके नथिंग मेंशनड अबाउट आउल आई हियर जीआरडिया लैम्ब्लिया फर्स्टली जीआरडिया लैम्ब्लिया इज नेवर अ डॉट लाइक स्ट्रक्चर एंड सेकेंडली जी आर डी आर लैम्बलिया हैपन्स टू बी इन द ल्यूमिन यू विल ऑलवेज सी दैट एज अ ल्यूमिनल ऑर्गेनिजम नॉट विद इन द सेल्स ओनली ऑप्शन दैट आई एम लेफ्ट विद वेरी रेयरली स्टडीड ऑर्गेनिजम माइक्रोस्पोरिडिया एंड लेट मी टेल यू ऑल अदर ऑर्गेनिजम्स ओनली क्रिप्टोस्पोरिडिया ऊपर ऊपर रहता है अदरवाइज माइक्रोस्पोरिडिया हो गया और इफ यू टॉक अबाउट साइक्लोस्पोरा और इफ यू टॉक अबाउट आइसोस्पोरा ऑल ऑफ दीज हैव अ प्रॉबिबिलिटी ऑफ गोइंग विद इन द सेल्स ऑल ऑफ देम गो विद इन द सेल्स ऑफ द इंटेस्टिंग सो वट एवर ऑप्शन वुड हैव बीन गिवन ओवे हर आई वुड हैव सिलेक्टेड बट नाउ आई वॉन्ट यू ऑल टू गो इन टू लिटिल बिट ऑफ माइक्रो दैट वी स्टडीड साइक्लोस्पोरा आइसोस्पोरा क्रिप्टोस्पोरिडियम इज देर एनी स्पेशल स्टेन फॉर देम दैट ऑल्सो शुड हैव बीन एन आंसर यू गैस डिड नॉट रीड दिस क्वेश्चन एट ऑल प्रॉपरली कुछ था कोई स्पेशल स्टेन था जेड एन स्टेन पॉजिटिव था क्रिप्टोस्पोरिडियम साइक्लोस्पोरा आइसोस्पोरा यस जेड एन स्टेन पॉजिटिव किन्यॉन स्टेन पॉजिटिव यहाँ क्या लिखा है इट इज एसिड फास्ट नेगेटिव when acid fast negative was also written over here why did all of you select option a cryptosporidium is acid fast positive right it is zn stain positive same for cyclospora zn positive same for isospora zn positive these three members are a part of a family microsporidia is not to do with zn wo is family ka part nahi hai na so it is not zn positive it is zn negative so now do you understand you guys did make a big big blunder that zn negative likha tha still you guys corrected you know you marked cryptosporidia and that is the problem when you become too comfortable with previous year questions which you guys have all of you know ye aims 2019 ka question hai ma'am ye bahut baar pooch chuki hai just another question that she's got today but over confidence nahi rakhna even in the exam you will get very similar looking questions but don't analyze it that iska answer mujhe aata hai so i'm not going to read everything hai na so itna important point was written over here and you ignored it so i hope now it is clear next question was your type of question this was actually the aims wala question dot like structures along the brush border your kind of question here i agreed your answer was cryptosporidia yes everyone sorted now one more question this i feel ab to easily ho jayega what is the answer to this question 43 year old factory worker presented with complaints of abdominal pain and diarrhea and weight loss hemoglobin level 9 grams MCV 88 femtoliter. Small intestinal biopsy has been shown, and I think now everyone will give me a right answer. Very good. So what did I tell you? Which organism? पहले orientation देखते हैं. You will say, ma'am, this is a gland. This is a round gland that has been shown over here. And in this gland, do you see any organism in the lumen? Yes. We just studied that which is the organism that we see in the lumen, which is the luminal organism. Luminal organism is going to be GRDR. So again, this question also is a PYQ, and I hope now there will not be any problem. So GRDR का shape कैसे लग रहा है? You say, ma'am, the GRDR that you used to show us in microbio, ये वाला GRDR versus the GRDR you are showing us here is so different. In microbio, you used to show us that angry man. that angry man over here you are showing us something like a sickle shape that is how micro and path images look different so in micro yes giardia will look like that angry face angry man but remember in pathology when you see it in the lumen it looks something like this it can look like a sickle shaped organism and that is why this image is so famous sickle shaped is what you need to remember are we okay with this guys yes agla question dekh sakte hain everyone correct let's move on to the next one biological indicator used in various sterilization techniques for quality check are given below identify the wrong pair this is a pyq this to you guys should be an expert in identify the wrong pair that has been mentioned over here 
biological indicator used in different sterilization techniques clostridium tetani hot air oven sterothermophilus plasma sterilization bacillus fumilis ionizing radiation and uh, bacillus sterothermophilus for ethylene oxide good very uh, there's a flood of options i've got majority of you i always go with majority so majority of you have said ma'am d is the answer b b ek answer aaya hai so we are going to what we are going to do we are going to make an entire list out of it okay I've written all the methods. Why don't you quickly help me fill in the blanks? Just as school me karte the, we used to make lists and fill in the blanks. That is what we are going to do over here today. So when I talk about hot air oven, guys, can you tell me what are the two controls that I use? Two controls. So hot air oven ke liye number one we can use. Yes, quick quick answers should start pouring in. I'm sure all of you know the answers very very intelligent. Okay, one answer I've got. Clostridium tetani is one of them. Clostridium tetani is one of them, and koi bacillus also. Very good. Bacillus subtilis. Now there's a twist in the story over here. Nowadays you must have seen. I would call this a social media question. Social media question. मतलब so many times I see screenshots traveling around on Telegram that ma'am in the question instead of bacillus subtilis, bacillus atrophius was mentioned. Atrophius was mentioned. So answer. Atrophius. What is atrophius? Atrophius and subtilis are not exactly the same. I'll call them cousin brothers. Means they belong to the same family. So if subtilis is mentioned or atrophius is mentioned, वो same same है. Either of the two will be mentioned in the exam. So you select. So these are the two things. One is a Clostridium. One is a Bacillus subtilis. Now let's come to autoclave and plasma sterilization. For both of them, we have the same control. What is the control? Bacillus sterothermophilus. remember bacillus sterothermophilus is the control for both for autoclave also as well as for plasma sterilization also coming to the next filtration techniques all those uh, air purifiers and filters that you have nowadays so hyped up because of pollution right so all the filters that we use they also need to have a control in them so filters when i say filters you understand na filter will be something like this very tiny tiny pores it will have very tiny tiny pores to what minute minute pores honge correct that is what a filter is and that is how you learn it filtration ka control is brevendi monas diminuta repeating brevendi monas diminuta so how will you learn it diminuta se yaad aayega minute so this is going to be the control for the minute minute pores that are there okay coming to the next radiation for radiation it is bacillus fumilis how will you learn this remember p and r look the same so bacillus fumilis is for radiation repeating bacillus fumilis is for radiation very good last one gas sterilization whenever i talk about gas sterilization which gas am i talking about i am talking about ethylene oxide eto likha hoga exam mein what is eto eto stands for ethylene oxide so when i'm using ethylene oxide basically i'm using a gas so gas sterilization ke liye g for g the answer over there is going to be bacillus globigii g for g so bacillus globigii is what we use for gas sterilization now let's come back so when i look at my options clostridium tetani bacillus subtilis bacillus atrophius hot air oven correct sterothermophilus is for two things autoclave and plasma sterilization that is also correct fumilis p and r look the same is for radiation that is also correct but sterothermophilus for ethylene oxide no ethylene oxide is gas sterilization gas sterilization ke liye i will be using bacillus globigii so that is the wrong pair that i had to identify that is the answer i hope this question is also clear yes easy ho gaya one more micro question Identify the microscope mentioned over here. This I was teaching the plus class students yesterday as a PYQ. So I hope they will definitely know the answer. I want others also to know. Let me know. Acha before that, Doctor Meena Krishnan. I think this is the slide you are wanting to uh, look out for. So yes, you can. This is the slide, and if you are done, we can move on. So identify the microscope. 
मोस्ट ऑफ यू ए एंड सी में कन्फ्यूजन है बट अगेन आई हैव टू गो विद मेजोरिटी ऑफ यू ना सो आई विल गो विद द मेजोरिटी एंड मोस्ट ऑफ यू हैव आंसर्ड सी सम ऑफ यू आंसर्ड लाइट माइक्रोस्कोप तो लाइट माइक्रोस्कोप जैसा है फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू वुड हैव गिवन मी जस्ट दिस मच ऑफ द फोटो आई वुड हैव ऑल्सो सेट दैट हाँ मे बी लाइट माइक्रोस्कोप है बट अलॉन्ग विद दैट दे हैव ऑल्सो गिवन टू यू गिवन यू द इन साइड ऑफ द लाइट ऑफ दिस माइक्रोस्कोप वॉट इज हैपनिंग इन साइड इट so please remember the inside picture tells me that this is a fluorescent microscope how do i get to know see for those who mentioned light light microscope mein kaun sa light hoga uh, the light that you'll have in the uh, you know in the microscope in light microscope will be a chhota sa bulb because you need basic basic jo white light hota hai you need that you're not going to have any big mercury lamp or anything else but in a fluorescent microscope you need ultraviolet light fluorescent microscope works on ultraviolet light so what is the kind of light source that you'll have in a fluorescent microscope you'll have a mercury lamp in it and mercury lamp was written over here because i am interested in ultraviolet light right number 1 after that i see something else we'll say fine ma'am this is your sample that has been kept over here so what do you have over here you have something extra which is known as the dichroic mirror that is known as the dichroic mirror this is not there in any other microscope this is only in a fluorescent microscope why why have the microbiologists and pathologists given you a dichroic mirror over here because the ultraviolet light that is coming initially is going to be of a shorter wavelength that is what the starting part of ultraviolet light is the ultraviolet light is going to be of a shorter wavelength now uh, just look at the diagram and tell me for example this blue line did your dichroic mirror allow the short wavelength to pass or did it reflect it what does the blue color line tell you that it is going to be it is going to be reflected dichroic mirror will not allow the short wavelength to pass so it was reflected down onto the sample koi bhi sample le lo for example uh, kidney biopsy hai kidney biopsy mein immunofluorescence karte hain right so for example there is a kidney biopsy sample over here so when this light goes on the sample the light that is that will be emitted back that will have a long wavelength so can i say the shorter wavelength in a fluorescent microscopy will be converted into a longer wavelength and now see look at that green color did the dichroic mirror allow the long wavelength to pass yes it did and that is where your eye is and you are able to see it so that is the use of dichroic mirror shorter wavelength will be reflected and longer wavelength will be allowed to pass through it so this is also a question that they ask you in the exam that is that uh, you know what wavelength is converted to what so shorter is converted to longer wavelength that is what happens in a fluorescent microscope which uses ultraviolet light so whenever you see this dichroic mirror blindly answer fluorescent microscope coming to the next one now if i indirectly ask you the same question which of the following structures are required in the microscope for taking this type of an image what type of an image has been mentioned over here immunofluorescence fluorescent microscopy image has been mentioned over here so now obviously for a fluorescent microscope the answer becomes simple i know you are going to give me a right answer that is going to be the dichroic mirror correct that is going to be the dichroic mirror so i think that is sorted as well yes everyone seems uh, comfortable with this and this was also the last question of the day so you guys are also done with the question but uh, ek chhota sa update that you have now today also we have an open house session but the timing of today's open house session will be uh, sharp at 1 uh, o'clock so 1 pm sharp we are going to start and you know the protocol first 20 minutes i am going it's going to be a short session of 45 minutes only so first 20 25 minutes the remaining cd markers we would be doing and the remaining of the 20 25 minutes whatever queries or you know things you want to ask we are going to all the strategy related questions we'll be taking up those okay so i'll be able to allow at least uh, four or five students i think to be able to ask questions in this much of time so you guys can keep your questions ready this open house will be at 1 pm and uh, never mind if you can uh, you know join in today and paracetamol jo bacha hai wo kar lenge but we usually go path micro alternate right so because we've done almost 
सिक्स डेज ऑफ माइक्रो एंड पैरासिटोलॉजी वील कम बैक टू अ फ्यू डेज ऑफ हिमैट एंड पैथ एंड देन वील स्विच बैक टू माइक्रो तो वो ऑल्टरनेट बेसिक में चलता रहेगा लाइक वी बिन डूइंग दिस इज द स्केड्यूल फॉर द फर्स्ट थ्री फोर डेज आई गिव यू द स्केड्यूल ऑफ द रेस्ट ऑफ द मंथ ऑल्सो इन अ डे और टू सो यू शुड बी एबल टू एनालाइज इट and yes that's about it ek aur test hai in case you guys have time today it's a test which is going to be at 4 pm so in case you want to give any pyq series it's not a class it's a test on the app so in case you want to give it it's today at 4 o'clock it's a mixed bag of pyq tests that are there pyq is available separately also guys so if you can just custom make a module in your uh, unacademy app and you'll be able to see that pyq automatically Yes, April schedule, Dr. Salman. I hope that is okay. And uh, I think um, yes, remaining parasite wala question bhi ho gaya. So I thought I think we are sorted that way. Also, guys, one last update. Today being March thirty first is the last day for the grand New Year end financial year end sale. So in case any of you are interested, then there's an additional twenty percent off that is going on on the Plus and the Iconic subscriptions. Patho ten is the code. So in case you wish to or plan to buy the Plus subscription, that is what you can go in for. PDF of this session and the next session today. I'll combine both the PDFs and uh, by afternoon I'll be posting it on the Telegram group. Kal wala bhi, aaj wala bhi. But from tomorrow our uh, Kickstart morning sessions are back on the app. They are back on the An Academy app. So tomorrow morning 7:30 I'll be meeting you guys on the app, right? Okay, Dr. Aman, I had already informed the FMG students. Uh, April end की तरफ pathology revision होगा and May beginning will be micro revision. Okay? Like we had had a session, ना? We had a session for the FMG students a while ago. So April third week, fourth week will be path, and May first second week or first week only predominantly will be micro part of it. ठीक है. चलो थैंक यू गाइज फॉर ज्वाइनिंग इन हैव अ ग्रेट डे स्टडी वेल सी यू इन द आफ्टरनून एट वन ओ क्लॉक शार्प फॉर द ओपन हाउस सेशन ऑन द ऐप एंड देन आई बी मीटिंग यू टुमारो एज वेल